Today in the news, we got some new leaks for NVIDIA. That's pretty much it. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. So, what's up with the green team? Well, more and more leaks have been popping out in the last week on the upcoming Ampere GPUs, and damn, the information is all over the place in comparison to the last few months. This goes to show that they really know how to keep things close to their leather jacket. All right, so what about this week? Well, first, there was a PCB leak, one that, if anything, is kind of bizarre. It started with a post on Billy Billy by Yuki Ancho. It shows small portions of the PCB without showing the whole thing. We got the power connectors, which in this case is three times eight pin. Now, it might seem like a lot of power, but this is actually an engineering sample of the 3090. These pins might well simply be for engineering purposes, since we know that these cards will use either the new 12 pin connector or or two times eight pins. The next picture is of the top connector, which is different from that of current NVLink, but I'll touch on that a little bit later. There were other pictures, but I'll jump straight to the overall PCB, which shows more information. There it partially is. Despite the horrible watermarking job, here's what it would look like cleaned up. As you can see, there are 12 memory chips visible, but another is actually hidden at the bottom there behind the pixelation. And since this is the backside of the PCB, we can assume that the front side is also populated. Since this is the 3090, it means this is a 24 gigabyte card. You can also see the insane power delivery for this board as it spans both sides of the chip with 23 chokes, or at least the solder points for those chokes. Now, the leaker put an Intel CPU on top of the backside die area for some reason. Some speculate that this space might be occupied by a coprocessor or even that the blurred out area on the left is occupied by a coprocessor, but I personally highly doubt it. What is interesting to me though is the new fingers for what should be NVLink. They're a lot different from the current fingers. Now this is just me speculating, but if Nvidia wanted to bring in an accelerator card for new GPUs, for example for ray tracing or deep learning purposes, they would surely use that NVLink. In any case, this looks just like the same NVLink third gen connector that's currently on the EGX A100 Ampere card. What do you guys think? Then we have the memory type. It seems to have been confirmed by Micron. They had the specs for GDDR6X listed on their website for a little while until it was taken down. This not only confirms the existence of GDDR6X, but also specifies the speeds as between 19 and 21 gigabits per second. One last thing that was touched on in the Leakosphere is the possibility of Ampere doubling its FP32 units. Currently, Turing has it laid out like this. Each SM has 64 stream processors with concurrent execution of int32 and fp32. As you can see from Nvidia's graph, fp32 is a lot more utilized during gaming tasks. By changing the ratio of int32 to fp32 cores, it would boost the performance in games and in ray tracing. This wouldn't be the first time Nvidia makes changes for the better of gaming specifically. They've kind of been doing that ever since the transition from Fermi to Kepler, moving away from GP GPU towards specific gaming performance. Now, the problem here is that, well, Nvidia already uses ray tracing cores. Unless they plan to get rid of them, this will likely not be the case. So let's recap all of the specs with the information currently available on the 3090. The chip would support the GA102 chip. It would feature 84 SMs for a total of 5,376 CUDA cores. This is believed to be the max for GA102. The base clock would be at 1,410 megahertz with a boost of 1,740. Now those as usual will be supplemented by GPU boost. So they they don't really matter unless the card runs so hot that they can't boost past it. Personally, I think it will probably have the headroom to blast past those clock speeds when it comes to third party offerings. In terms of memory, this specific model would get 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X clocked at an effective 21 gigahertz. Since GDDR6 can clock between 19 and 21 gigahertz, we might see the lower tiered cards have lower clocks. So that's all the current information on the top of the line Ampere G force cards. A little warning as usual, specs are a fickle thing, especially when it comes to Nvidia. Back in the 1080 Ti days, the leaks pointed at the card to have 3,328 CUDA cores and 10 gigabytes of VRAM all the way up to launch. And it turned out with 3,584 CUDA cores and 11 gigabytes. So yeah. And that is pretty much it for the catch up guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the channel, stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.